Remember, I don't want to have to shoot you in the face. Oh, that's so sweet. I'll start this by saying that zombies like this are just Hollywood's imagination. For one, the human body decays so rapidly that the living dead would be incapacitated, since human muscle and soft tissue disintegrates within a few days to weeks after death. So seeing hordes of the undead walking around looking for human flesh to feast on could never be real. Or could they? We do know that there are examples of parasites within the animal kingdom that take over their hosts' bodies, causing them to be manipulated like zombies. For example, the spores of the Ophiocordyceps fungus infects the bodies of ants, which allows it to hijack and take over the insect's movements. The fungus causes the ant to leave its nest, and with a tetanus-like lockjaw, forces the ant to bite down on vegetation, causing the ant to be stuck in place. The parasitic fungus eventually kills the host and erupts from the ant's head with a growth called a stroma, which also releases spores which go on to infect other ants. There are many other documented relationships between parasite and hosts within the animal kingdom, and probably more we don't know about, because more than half of the species we know on Earth are parasites. But can this ever happen to humans? Yes and no. But probably not what you see here. Take for example, the parasite Toxoplasma gondii. Humans can be infected by this intracellular parasite through eating uncooked meat, or through their cats, especially when cleaning out litter boxes. But infection usually occurs in people who are immunocompromised. Typically, people present with constitutional symptoms like fever, body aches, and chills, but on rare occasions can lead to encephalitis or infect the brain, leading to changes in personality and aggression. But how would you explain the other characteristics of zombies, like the shuffling gait and difficulty with walking? A lesion or toxin affecting the cerebellum can cause these slow shuffling manifestations, a good example would be alcohol, which not only affects your sensorium, but also alters your gait and balance. Lesions to another part of the brain, the frontal lobe, would also explain a zombie's change in behavior or lack of personality. This area of the brain is normally responsible for a person's personality or impulsivity. The case of Phineas Gage illustrates this perfectly. He was an American railroad foreman who survived an accidental injury to his frontal lobe, resulting in permanent changes to his personality and behavior. Damage to the area of the brain called the ventromedial hypothalamus can lead a person to be hungry all the time. It's an area of the brain that affects satiety, and so a lesion here would cause a person to always want to eat which can explain another classic feature of zombies. And finally, the zombie transmitted infection through bite can be illustrated in the real world by rabies. Typically, it's transmitted from infected animals, such as dogs, bats, or raccoons, already infected with the virus. What makes this implausible, however, is that the incubation period is typically on the magnitude of weeks to months. With rabies, the infected individual's disease leads to a progression of encephalopathy, which can cause lethargy, personality changes, and aggression in some cases. However, the incubation period is just too long to convert the walking dead. So the zombie apocalypse probably isn't going to happen like we see on TV, in games, or in movies but it does make for some terrifyingly good entertainment and makes us scientists wonder if it could ever be possible. Just food for thought. <laughs>